Okay, so this is what usually happens where uh, you're trying to use um, you're trying to use Bootcamp Assistant to go ahead and start up to start up uh, the download for what is it doing to start up the download for your Windows support drivers these are the drivers that your Windows um, that Windows the operating system will need to have installed in order to read and work with uh, the hardware on your computer so the Windows support drivers drivers are basically pieces of little software that your computer reads and starts up every time Windows starts these drivers are the instructions on how to operate that piece of hardware. That's what a driver does. It is important that your computer, that Windows, has the proper drivers in order to work with the computer it's running on. Apple and Microsoft have, uh, that's my impression, have worked together to provide different drivers so that you can install Windows and run both Mac OS X and Windows at this, on the same computer and expect the same kind of performance that you would normally have. To install the Windows support drivers you would typically start up Boot Camp Assistant. This is the program we're on right now. You would typically run up this program. You, wanna, you would either download to a CD or a DVD or to an external drive. Now, I would recommend installing to a DVD, not a CD, because beforehand you're probably not going to know how large your support driver file is going to be. So, I would save a copy to a DVD or to an external drive. Now, we're not actually saving this to an external drive on my computer. We're going to save it just in the home directory on my computer. It's going to be called Windows Support. We're going to authorize it, and what's going to happen is it's going to go all the way to like three-fourths of the way. And for the next eight hours, that's it. Of course, some, some people have said that eight hours later, they don't get jack shit anything, which is unfortunate. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and stop this. We're going to go ahead and Apple Q out of Boot Camp Assistant. Or Command Q is the new way of saying it. Apple Q is just what I learned when I was in elementary school. I'm going to eat a french fry. We're going to go ahead and navigate to this file. This file, what's going to happen is when you click it, it's going to open up Safari and it's going to want to download it to your downloads folder or wherever you have set your directory. By default, it will be in your home directory slash downloads. When you normally, when you click it, what it's going to do is it's going to open up the App Store and check for updates. The App Store is not going to give us what we want. We're going to have to do this um, old school. Go ahead and Apple Q out of the App Store. We're not going to need it for this video. You want to navigate to the folder in which you downloaded it to. So if it's if it's a stack on your dock or whatever, that's not going to work. It doesn't give you the same leverage as you would in the regular Finder window. Right click the file that you just downloaded. Go to Other when you go to Open With and you want to open your document using a plain text program. Text app comes by default on Windows software on, on Mac OS X. I don't recommend using something like Pages or Microsoft Word to open up your document because it doesn't read it doesn't interpret it the same way as a, a plain text editor would like text edit. You need another french fry? Here's the next step. We're going to go ahead and Command F and search for Boot Camp ESD 
esd.pkg. Give me one second. Did you say my name, Mom? No. My mom's busy doing something um, with her hair, and she... What? They're not talking to me. Okay, so you want to go ahead and search that. It's going to come up with six results, as you see right there. There's six instances. You want to go through each instance, see bootcamp.esd.pkg, scroll down a little bit on that document, and look for a D-list file that has that, that corresponds with it. You know it corresponds when you see this next to it. 041-4775. Now it's different for each PKG file. So you want to look, look at this and then look at the D-list file that corresponds with it. All these D-list files right here, Japanese, Spanish, DA, NO, you're going to want to look for the D-list file that has English on it. There it is. We're going to go ahead, right click, open URL. It's going to open up Safari and we're going to ignore it. Hit Command Tab to switch the text edit real quick and go ahead and look for other instances of bootcamp.pkg 0412303 it's usually immediately below open URL command tab bootcamp.pkg there's six of these files, so we're going to have six tabs by the time we're done looking at all these files. Command tab. Here's the next one. 4776. Did we go back? No, we didn't. D list. 4776. Open. We got two more files to look for. Nine zero nine two five English zero nine two five. Excuse me. One more. This is three eight nine one. Look at this D list file. Open URL. All right, so now we have six tabs. These six tabs have information based upon your computer. There's a whole bunch of different uh, different software download installations that we need to keep track of. This is what how uh, Apple Inc. actually keeps track of which drivers you need to install based upon which model your computer is. But we need to find the file that Apple uses uh, that Apple uses um, to pair with your computer, but because we're not using software, we're going to have to do this uh, manually. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the second desktop, just get everything out of the way. Uh, go to about this Mac, so that's in the Apple menu, and you want to click more info. My computer is a MacBook Air. We're going to hit System Report. System Report is usually um, right on the bottom of that window. And we're going to get this document right here. We want to look for the model identifier. That's this thing right here. My model identifier is MacBook Air 5,2. If you don't feel comfortable typing that in later, which we will want to do in a bit, you want to go ahead and copy that uh, string. Go ahead and go back to the plist files, Command F, and then Command V, as in violin. You want to do that on each page. It says not found. Command F, 
not found. And you'll see that right here, not found. So pay attention to that. Make sure you're watching this video in HD so you can see those details. Not found, Command F, not found, Command F, not found, Command F. One instance found right there. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so we want to, now that we know we've found the plist, the DList file that has the model identifier that is compatible with my computer, look up at your URL bar. Okay? Do you see that number? 0413891? We want to look for that model identifier number, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and command C. Go back to your text document. Command tab, or actually hold down command and then just uh, hit tab until you get your text at it. We're learning keyboard sh shortcuts also today. We're going to want to do command V. Look for all instances of that and find the bootcamp.esd.pkg that we were looking at earlier. Find the one that has that code. This is the one. So we're going to copy that, the whole thing, from http. To .pkg. Open URL and it's going to download. Now it's going to take a while depending upon your system configuration. My system configuration happens to have enough drivers that it takes up about a gigabyte of space. So it's going to take a little bit but uh, after about 15 minutes or so, it should be done, and then we will be on our way. Luckily, though, I happen to have prepared, prepared for this event in advance. So what we're here, I'm going to show you where to find it. We're going to go ahead and... Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to hide everything. I'm busy! Gonna need another french fry. It's family at the door. Siblings. Mmm. Crunchy. And homemade. What was I gonna do? Oh, that's right. You want to go to your downloads folder, wherever you downloaded your bootcamp uh, bootcampesd.pkg, and click it. Normally, under normal circumstances, you want to go ahead and change your install location. You want to go ahead and install it somewhere on this hard drive. Choose a folder in which to put that file, and then you'll be on your way. But if for some reason you forget to pick a destination folder, if you forget to change the install location, I can help you there. You want to go to Finder. You want to go to uh, the root of your Mac, your OS X hard drive. So it's usually by default called Macintosh HD. You want to go to Library. Go to Applications application support bootcamp and why does it always why is it disappearing on me I did this I did this tutorial more than once today just to get it right and it's gonna install to that location Go back to the bootcamp folder. There's your DMG. You're going to double click it. It's going to open and verify that package, the disk image. And it appears to still be there. These files, these files right here, you want to copy these files to an external drive. That is very important for you to do. 
if you don't uh, if you don't export if you don't copy these files to an external uh, drive or to a DVD, uh, you'll uh, your computer isn't going to function the way you would expect it to. So you want to either do a Command C or you want to do uh, right click and uh, copy seven items. You can select all of them with, by dragging your mouse over them or you can hit Command A and I'll select all of them for you. We're going to eject that disk image. And now what you want to do is that now that, now that you have that uh, installed on your, uh, it, now that you have the files that you need, you want to go ahead and reboot into Windows if you haven't installed Windows already. You, in order for you to, you can install Windows without installing, downloading the Windows support software, but when you go into Windows, you're not going to be able to right click, you're not going to be able to use the function keys at the top of your uh, keyboard, you're not going to be able to there's a lot of things that you're going to be unable to do. You're not going to be able to use two fingers to right click and stuff like that. Go to startup disk in your system preferences and under normal circumstances it would show Windows as a boot up drive right here. Mine doesn't show up as a boot up drive because I'm using something else to load the the drive uh, called Tuxera NTFS. Tuxera NTFS basically allows me to write to the uh, Windows partition as well as uh, read from it. But because I'm using that uh, plugin, so for some reason Boot Camp or in Mac OS X can't read that, that that's actually there as an option. So there's two ways that you can, there's three ways that you can go and go about booting into OS to Windows. You can go to the system preferences startup disk like we did and then reboot or you can uh, restart as normally, but after you hear the startup sound, before you see the Apple show up on the screen, you want to hold down the Option key. It's to the left of your Command key and to the right of your Control key. When you see when you click that Control, when you hit the Option key and you hold it down until uh, different uh, boot options show up, then you can select uh, Windows. Otherwise, you'll just boot right back into OS X and have to restart again. I use a piece of software called uh, Quick Boot. It looks like this. This uh, software right here. It